Shalom greetings in the name of the Lord Yeshua. I thought I should do this video because I talk about it that I'll do it in one of the recent videos I've done in this new third YouTube channel of mine that I believe we usher us the wise servant, maiden servant of Joel 223 into the promise of God for our lives. The promise that <laughs> It says not to partake of. The Pharisee has been condemned from partaking of. But you, the children of the Most High God, the ones that are the broken body of the you know, Lord and Savior who gave his body for us, the broken stones of the living temple, you've forgotten that you are the temple of the living God, 1 Corinthians 3.16, 1 Corinthians 6.19, 2 Corinthians 6, 16. You don't know that your redemption is there. You are not even in your pent room of your mind. You don't have your mind renewed with the word of God according to Romans 12, 1 to 2. You are not even presenting your body broken for you at an expensive price paid by the Lord and Savior Yeshua, Jesus Christ, on the way to Calvary and all the way, even on the cross. He paid the price to give you his broken body, to be a fellow cell body member, brothers and sisters, one to another, doing his will, living holy with our body, and also renew your mind, not with the best-selling book of Esau, not with the flattery of by the book, and sell if not of their own lie books, but going to the scripture tampered by the enemies, but yet go to the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, our friend for a lifetime, who will lead us and guide us into all truth. According to Luke, you know, chapter, which book of Luke will I say now? 4-4, four, four, that says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So the Holy Spirit will guide us to the truth of God's word and explain why we shouldn't depend on the lies of Esau inputted in the name of Jeremiah 88, 2 Peter 3, 16, the warnings of the ancient ones to us so that we know how to depend on the Holy Spirit to guide us. So today I'm going to be talking about woe to the rich. If you are rich, as in the likes of this lady, this woman, that calls herself reverend in trouser of the Deuteronomy 22.5 abominable clothing, that men, you know, should know how to even tell their wives. But since many of them are under their wives, they don't know how to speak the truth. And many of them are like Ahab anyway, that allow Jezebel that has no fear of God to come and just parade the same way Jezebel paraded the land of Israel, the holy land, and messed, and messed it up with her dogs, and our false bows from the land of Sidon, the same way you allow your so-called wives to parade in the name of, you know, going in trouser as Reverend Mrs. in trouser with makeup of Jeremiah 4, 30, devastated ones of Jerry, of uh, Jezebel. You just allow all these things with their dangling jewelries that the Lord God himself from heaven says, Take off those ornaments before I even know what to do with you. In Exodus 33, 3 to 6, after the very children of the Messiah God coming out of Egypt, turned what was supposed to be a gift to them to idolatry of golden calf. So God saw it as idolatry since then and told them to take it off so that they will not be objects of idolatry. But this one clad themselves with Jezebel's makeup, jewelries have been condemned and made unclean for them according to Ezekiel 720 and are so hasty to go on in abominable clothing of Zephaniah 1 8 to which the Lord says I will come and punish all those who call themselves by the name of the Lord but will not depart from iniquity yet clad themselves in foreign apparel because God knows he did not die for the whole wide universe he died for the world of Israel so it's coming back for all Israel whom he died for. Those who remain as Israel in the sight of heaven. 
Romans 11 26. So I told let me do this um, promise video on the rich. Are you rich by anything physical? You are boasting. Your boast is that you are rich in anything physical. Then you are carrying the woe of God. God says woe to the rich and those who go by riches that are physical because we also who are the poor of the earth, whom the Lord has chosen to be the ones that will be rich in heaven very soon, as he restores the kingdom back to Israel very soon, as he restores the earth that belongs to the kingdom that is going to restore, as he restores all the children of the earth, you know, who are yielded to him in obedience, in holiness, righteousness, and truth. God Almighty is coming to restore us. He expects us to be rich in faith. If every of the expectation of the Lord for your life is not spiritual, then you are carnal. If you are rich in stuff, in stuff, I've got a lot of gilly, brand new, dozens, a lot of, you know, maybe now few few laces you know more of wax prints new new brand new because i sell them and by the way he only moves so i've got all this but then even with them since yes i know how to just desire to be modest god wants us to be modest even in the clothing he allows us to put on according to matthew chapter 6 in feeding in food he doesn't want us to join those of gluttony. Spirit of gluttony is a demonic spirit. Some people are hardly eating. Yes, you come here and showcase maybe once in a month that you cook or once in a, a week that you cook so much, you do as if that's how you eat, as if you have come here to eat. Is eating now or excessive food a sign that we belong to heaven? Remember the rich fool had success in his planting and harvesting but he had no relationship with the lord that you have blessing does not mean god is with you it's just that you have superposition yourself maybe as a descendant of somebody who pleased the lord but you don't know the lord you position yourself because you inherited the place that belongs to the righteous this is how the blessing of the righteous that pleases god have always blessed some other members of their family because it is the blessing from heaven that make it rich. I don't know sorrow. But because the righteous will always be righteous, they share it to members of their household. Even those who are yet to know the Lord. Hoping they will come to the knowledge of the Lord. This is how Abraham's blessing made Lot rich. But Lot was so religious, so selfish, so greedy. Still in the flesh. The same way the blessings of the Lord Yeshua made Judas rich in heaven. But it was so can have so flesh so damn the tribe that always end up in the flesh and so he went to make you know allegiance with the flesh that finished it so now his mansion is in heaven his habitation no one will take but he judas the betrayer that betrays his own lord with a kiss be careful who kisses you many of them those kiss will lead to betrayal so now judas is in hell fire that you started with the Lord does not mean you end with the Lord. That is why you need to be obedient to Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. To work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Look at this woman now. I have tried to get to her of recent and before. She was even trying to talk when Oshina, Oshina she said, you know, death was made known. If you touch one of us, you touch all of us. Don't be you say that uh, you should stay with your rich friends. As in that she was not rich, oh. she hardly had money. Even the, mo the money given to her in the name of singing about. Some people go, they have received their reward. Why will you go and sing with a voice given to you by heaven? Where is this verse, freely you have received, freely give? You know, compared to <laughs> some who are even making merchandise of the Lord. So how will the Lord bless you? You've received your reward. This timeline of after Calvary, they don't even know that they are so different from the timeline of before Calvary. If you look at where the class is, that's 
just see how far you are from the clouds. That's like the location of the people of Israel. You know where the sun is, even higher than the clouds. That's the location of the timeline of Abu God. So you are on, you know, sun, cloud, you are on the body, flesh, earth and ground level. You see, com you, you compare yourself. That means the part of Satan that fell, as in Lucifer, fell to the ground. And you are the body that, you know, is next to the ground, shattered pieces of the flesh. And the flesh will never, never, I don't know some people's ear, according to the scriptures, according to even prophecy by some who say they went to heaven, they saw the Lord. They were told, man is dull of hearing, and God is talking to M A N, low capital letter man. Even if you started with capital letter M A N, they are dull of hearing. So that First Corinthians 15 50 is saying, brothers and sisters, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. If you allow, let that represent Satan, Lucifer, dragon, whatever, who also masqueraded himself as angel of light. The flesh too is doing the same. After pinned himself against the body of Jacob, Judah, Yeshua's body was pinned down. He exalted himself as in Easter flesh, exalted himself, built a fake Jerusalem to deceive the whole world and says he is the true son of God. Yet, you have scriptures that tells you that God hates him. The only group of people that God even say he hates because he's the most wicked of all nations is Esau. The one that takes the lead as flesh that is over the body. And you look at him and you are drooling. What are you drooling for? What does he have that he has not stolen from you? That's why God said, this time line after Calvary, store for yourself riches in heaven because some people don't see the connection. So somebody now will go and use lie, fraudulence. Do you know somebody can become rich? Just like that. By killing the member of his own household and sitting and crying and sitting on the inheritance that he has inherited. But you don't ask how did he get the riches? So it's not about being rich, even in physical. Because if you are of God and you have the spirit of God, this end time, you know the time we are. That this is the time you use your gift, spiritual, physical, every of your gift, to the pleasing of your heavenly father. This is not a time to accumulate like the rich fool. I'm not calling anybody fool. If you call anybody fool, like some who just do in their non-legal drama, you are liable to have fire. Matthew 5.22 You will give account for why you call somebody who has the knowledge of God a fool. Because it is only those who have no knowledge of God and from their heart they say it. And how do you know where there are some people in their heart they are saying there is no God? Those were the ones the Lord was referring to in Psalm 53 one, in Psalm 14 one, that those who say there is no God is a fool. But leave them, don't even call them fool. The best you can be on the same side is to say, you are being foolish for thinking there is no God. Because why do you think the sign the sun sign, sign that is giving us to shine upon us and give us, you know, harvest of our crops. Where do you think that sign is from? From the throne of him who sits upon the circle of the earth, watching us. So, talking about riches, a woman is so full of herself. Now is the mystery of sex. Is that one who gave her that topic to talk of recent mystery of sex why you even begin to use the words of the evil side there was one time i put a table good evil so that when somebody is even going to the side of evil 
and taking any of those words and say God gave her prophecy. God gave him prophecy. That's one way for you to know that this one she's speaking out of the imagination of her mind. Oh. Or the men too that say, hey, must be so, hey, must be. And the thing that when you see somebody copy and paste, this is the way we have made mistake. We, before I began to study the word of God for myself, I would just copy and paste uh, what this one we were saying when we were still in the church. We are not under the law. Uh, Jesus became a curse for us. Who told you Jesus became a curse? It is Judas that became a curse. Curse is anyone hung on a tree. For your information, Jesus was hung on a tree. Our own Lord was crucified on the cross. Two different, yes, similar to the confused. You say you are not under the law. You are not under the law of sin and death. That is what Apostle Paul was saying. But this one that said they are translating our script, who are the very enemy that scattered our four parents from being in their land in Israel during the cloud area. As we came down this valley of shadow of death, the very ones of Psalm 83, 4. They are the ones now translating your script. So putting their lives as Apostle Peter from the beginning of this 2000 years or shouting in 2 Peter 3, 16. They are stable people, oh. the Herod, the Romans, Roman Herod, Roman crucifiers of our Lord, Roman uh, Catholic, that established Roman churches. Now you say you are not Roman, you fought, you, there is a... Um, Protest, you protested. You call yourself protester, protestant church, all sort of church, but you still hang on to church you now. That's their time too. So for somebody to come and say, God say, woman should stop smelling in church. Which God do? Is it Dan that is speaking to you? Or Lucifer, the small G God of 2 Corinthians 4 4. So sometimes I don't even bother to listen too much. I just see where some people are getting imagination of their mind. So now, to this uh, aspect of, you know, in this timeline, if you claim to be rich, then God consider you under a curse. Woe is upon you. Let's see. Let's see the scripture. Is it not in your New Testament? Or you want to deny New Testament that you claim? Luke chapter 6, verse 24. Read. Let me even read. From verse 20, blessed are you who hunger now, and you will be satisfied. And that hunger may be both physical and spiritual, because we are the people of the earth with the spirit of heaven in us. So it's two-way hunger. There are some of our people who have not even come to the Lord, but they hunger physically. I hear the rich one are saying they should continue to be rich of themselves. If you find yourself the richest among you, you should teach your younger or older or poorer where you should allow yourself to be a blessing to those ones and teach them even how to even excel in their own trade. You say they should teach. Now, the reason why I even came now, why is she, you know, now coming to even a, have a talk of recent, apart from I wanted to even share on this topic, because I must open your eyes that she's a modern day Safira. And she's giving you an impression as if all is well with her, but all is not well with her uh, marriage. So this recent doctrine of mystery of sex, who gave her that one? Not God Almighty, because we don't even have sex. As the holy children of Israel, we become intimate with our spouses. So we don't go to all those rubbish that is outside second Songs of Solomon chapter 2 verse 6. We don't go into sexual styles. We go into the arena of the Gentiles. You are rich in all the styles. All the this. So you are talking mystery of sex. Do you know why these people, we cannot keep quiet, but talk for those who can't talk is that there are some young ones of you that follow her, your children are listening to her, and going into all sorts of immorality in their matrimonial bed because they think they have an expert. She is a Safira, and it's just enough for somebody to tell her to please shut up. 
We know you have chosen to identify yourself with the rich in sins of this world. And so you are liable to the woe that is common upon the rich. Because our own richness is in spirituality. We are rich in faith. We are rich in the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are rich in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 22-23. And we keep being enriched in those spiritual giftings. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Luke 6, from verse 20. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. If this, this thing is happening to you as a child of God, you think God is wrong with you? God knows you are enslaved by the flesh. So this is where negativity will be happy, but God says it's with you. Don't worry. He will still yet deliver us and restore the kingdom to Israel in the millennial reign of peace on earth. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you. Our children have been put in detention camps. Those ones now, some may be behaving frustrated, and when they start acting, they will start saying, he did it, he did that. When they start acting to free themselves from that detention camp, they, they sign themselves into, since they were signing a Polish paper, not knowing what they were signing. And the one that refused to sign, they dealt with him, took his phone off him. You see that these people, when it gets to tough time, they will show that they really hate you. Because John 17 says, if they hated the Lord, those multiple groups of the Gentiles that came together to clear away your Lord and your people from their land, they will show their hatred. For you, but why not is fishing their monetary from afar? You think, ah, these people are peaceful. Ah. You know more than the scriptures. Now, those ones, hopefully, they will soon be let out of that detention camp. Imagine fleeing with all the horrible stories, you know, being discriminated against from Ukrainian war. You go to Poland, so we were singing the, the song of Poland, 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 as it as the saving place. Until some people have found themselves in detention camp. When you see the video, I've uploaded it, you see as if they were in prison. If your own child was there, what would you do? You won't talk. You won't arise as a mother in Israel like Deborah did and take matters into your hands. You don't say, as long as my own family is doing okay. Ah, God is watching us. At least you can pray. Bow your knees and pray for the salvation of your people that are in those enslaved place. Because if verse 22 says, blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, and insult you, and reject your name as evil, because of the Son of Man. We know that the Son of Man is now the Son of the Living God. Hebrews 1, 1 to 2. John, beloved, is the son of the living God. Even the living God himself on the cross said, Son, behold thy mother. Woman, behold thy son. That's a mystery. Because that was Mary and John. But from your scriptures, it is actually, the truth is that it is actually Anna that gave birth to John, beloved Baptist. So how did John, beloved Baptist, become the son of Mary. I know. I've asked. These are deep mystery that I just want God to fill me to the brim before we start talking these mysteries. Because even the obvious ones, people do not know the person of the Holy Spirit. You don't know the person of the Holy Spirit. And you didn't ask the Holy Spirit. When you say, Lord, 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 you think you are just talking about a force, a fire? If I wake up, the redemption is near. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to that verse 24. To you, Funka David Juma, and those who celebrate. Please, the picture I'm going to put there as I wish I can, you know, just let me get my second phone. This is how 
I don't know how else to show it because I'm not using app to put. There's a word under that since this is like a rich dressing. Fake hair, unclean jewelries, makeup of the devastated ones of Jeremiah 430. That's what makes you rich. There's another picture that will have show where she was looking so humble. Maybe then she was looking like uh, this village woman you want to help. And they put the two side by side. You can go and google her and see. They put then and now. You transform yourself into the image of Jezebel and you think you are rich. There's a word here. That's why I'm going to use this for those who can pick it up. Let me lower the lights. Maybe that will help. There's a phrase there under that, that picture that says, Stop befriending poor people. Well, I'm the poor of the poorest. That's what I believe. I'm such a wise woman by the grace of heaven. I know where to position myself. If God says he has chosen the poor of his earthly people, not just any poor of them, Pharisee or poor of Israel, that's their own. You'll be fine as them poor after treating others. That's their own. But of God's own people, for his coming for his people, Israel, Romans 11, 26, his poor people, he has chosen to inherit the treasures of the new millennial reign of peace on earth. This one now that has said that you should stop befriending poor people. I've done a video about her. Does she know the scripture that says in verse 24 of Luke 6, but woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. If somebody just come and pronounce this, no text, no, you know, verse to give you, you will say, ah, ah. It's all negative, negative. Well, my calling is based on Isaiah 58, 1 to 2. What will you say about that? Tell my own people of Jacob, Israel, they are sins. You are propagating carnality, talking canal, you are talking mystery of sex. When those sex that belongs to the enemy belong became mystery, we know each other. We are supposed to know as Adam knew Eve. We are supposed to be intimate, not having sex. Because a rapist can have sex. Is the person that is raped that will call it rape. So you know the difference between rape, sex, and intimacy. Which one is this one that you are saying you are preaching? Clear of I'm still confusing the minds of those ones of Hosea 4 6 who will not go and carry their Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to lead and guide them into all truth. As they also look at somebody who looks well dressed. With all the things that annoys God. You should come and make a restitution if you don't want us talking about it or if you're talking down on God's poor people. Because the Lord himself was talking here in verse 20. Looking at his disciples, the Lord said, Bless are you who are poor. Bless are you who are poor to his disciples. Though. The likes of Peter, the likes of Philip that became apostles. After Pentecost. That's why Peter was saying it. Silver and gold I have none. But what I have I will give to you. In the name of Yeshua. Of Nazareth. Rise and walk. He was rich in the power of the Holy Spirit. After starting for their own day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 114, Acts chapter 214. So in Acts chapter 3, they could rot, they could do mighty miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit in them. 
But let the house silver and gold do. You that come this enter and flaunt your silver and gold after you've compromised, you've cheated people. This woman, I'm not even interested in going to how she has scammed people of their money. Because it's so annoying. Some of you will not understand that annoyance. Nobody can come except my own wonders that I no, I no more even owe any money. To tell me that uh, in all the 2000, from even before that, before 2014, where I started YouTube, even on Facebook, that I scam anybody of money. Me, I'm looking for how to give out Bible, give out this, give out that. Some are scamming you. Yes, you rush after them. Foolish ones. They want to teach you here. They want to grab here, grab there. That's your own. So, God. Almighty is speaking to his own faithful disciples. Blessed are you who are poor. That you talk down on those ones that God say they are blessed, they are his own. They should. So who, who will tell you you are rich? You are not rich. Jeremiah 4 says you are devastated. They are just painting up. They just, this one, everybody can do it too. Everybody can do it. Even without the idolatry you know, the fire jewelry that, that some people now opening their eyes in dreams to see that they are snakes and all these things. See, they don't want to know that they are unclean. The people of God are the ones that make something unclean. Then God make it unclean for them too in the spiritual realm. To you, you will say, I didn't go, this year, but it's unclean in the spiritual realm. Get it into your brain because we come to Revelation 3 50 to 20. Well, in the lives of this Funke Adejumo, we'll be telling you that she's rich because she's dressed up and they put her in photo shoot and put all the glossy something that covers the pimples, the all these things that make up and spoil in your face. Since you refuse to be natural, and then you to look, ah, she has, and then she holds her hand, she has this watch, oh. She has Ringo. She has, is that in riches? It's what is inside you that God will count when you come out of the body. There's faith in her heart, oh. fruit of the spirit. Ah, she's thinking about the poor. Children that are not ours, locked up in detention. And God knows sometimes I can be angry that. Why are you treating our children like this? But I know why. If you don't know who you are, from your own appearance, they know who you are. It's you that think this one because they exalted themselves after stealing the gold and silver of Israel. They exalted themselves as though they are the ones who bring. Do you know there's no good gift? There's a video I watched a while ago. No good invention, no good good though, that did not come through an earthly person. And so when I say some young ones now that they say they did something in Nigeria, they took them to America all this. The parents will say, ah, my, my son has gone to America. Mm. Mary hid her own son for 30 years before he came out. You push them. They want to know how much he knows or how they can use his idea for their own purpose and throw your son back to you. And then they will now make the idea quick, 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 quick. And put copyright on it. Not knowing that it started for your children. That the Lord is bringing ideas to and so when you even try to go back and use that idea they say copyright they are the cheat the flesh has always been the cheat liar supplanter because up to today our people don't learn God gave you a voice as people of the earth you think you seek for the Lord of the earth but the, no they want to seek for the God of the world. And this one thing that by going to church created by the enemies, since Pope is there, married to you. If you are in any church, Pope is your bridegroom. We that got called out to himself, according to Second Corinthians 6, 4 to 18, from us who are obedient to him, is choosing his bride and his bridesmaid. Where is Paul? 
Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. You who are rich, yours is the damnation of Satan. You don't need the Lord to tell you the opposite. God chose the poor, that means he's rejecting the rich. Because any blessing that comes to me now, any blessing that comes to me, that's how it's been my lifestyle. Any blessing that comes to me now, quickly has it gone because the needs are there even before the blessing came. Imagine the poor widow who had just a little flour and oil. And maybe she just told her neighbor, this is all I have. After this, you see that God does a miracle we are prepared to starve to death. And then as she's believing God, a prophet, the prophet of the Lord came. And she even explained, this is the little I have. The prophet says, still make some for me, let me eat first. When God is trying you, the, the foolish ones will think, hey, they will just talk against God in that prophet. Because the prophet of the Lord has been given the power to say, like Apostle Peter, to speak. Silver and gold I don't have, but I have the authority in the name of Yeshua to tell you to rise up and be made whole. The prophet too know that they may not have flour and oil, but they have opportunity to speak that what somebody else is have should not run dry. And so sometimes the ways of the Lord is foolishness to those who are perishing. Because if you are the one, you are believing God for this and somebody comes to your house, I have known by now that if I'm believing God, God please, I need five pounds. Five pounds, I need five pounds. Because I dress in a cloth. I've just removed this label, the label of this cloth. You know? That is like 25 pounds. If I say I'm looking for 5 pounds, that doesn't mean that. Yeah, I just want a cloth, 25 pounds dress. Why are you asking for 5 pounds? I could have bought this one since. Maybe I could have bought it since a month ago. So, if somebody come, you know, I'm still believing God for 5 pounds. Somebody comes, such a Give me 20 pounds. See this beautiful clothes you wore. Give me 20 pounds, please. I have not eaten since yesterday. My family, my children. You know, please help us. And I'll tell the person, I don't have five pounds, so it's true. What do you want to buy if not eating? But you may have full stuff. That is more than five pounds. Take with all your heart, take the opportunity to pack with a loving, cheerful heart. And bless that family. God is watching. The problem is that most of you do not truly believe that God is watching you. God is watching. Look at my daughter. I know she really does not have the five pounds, but she gave more than five pounds. Because anything I have that is two, 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 I would like to have it. If I have two bottles of uh, five liter oil, take this from my sister. Two bag of rice, take this one. Take this. Let's share it. According to Acts 4.32, we all had in common. We don't have to have the money, but we can have what money buys. That is much more. So, you yeah, are saying you are rich. But God is saying, what to you? If your riches is about the way you dress, all these um, artificial act as if it shall. That's pretense to you. Artificial. Act as if it shall. You act rich. Doesn't mean you are rich. So who has the definition of who is rich? God says that he has chosen those who are poor in this timeline to be rich in faith. We are rich because we have faith that the Lord is coming to pour on us our own Pentecostal double portion are pouring. Then we can rise up to do the work of the end time evangelism, the last revival. The spirit and the bride says come. Revelation 12 1, Revelation 22 7. The shock. Sometimes I look at myself, I said, Janet. It seems that this your Matthew 80 20 is coming to pass. So. Yes. 
So what to you who are rich? For you have already received your comfort. You have your comfort for talking down God's poor people. And saying people should ditch their rich, their poor friend and go for rich. Rich on what standard? Rich on what standard? Because even Isaiah is telling you in Isaiah chapter 3, 16 to 24, with insight of this prophet, knowing about what is happening then, the end of then Israel and the end of where the Israel children will be scattered to. He's saying this Isaiah chapter 3. The Lord says, The woman of Zion, Zion, we are the one in the valley sleeping. When we are awake, we are the women of Jerusalem. But now we are in Zion. Whenever we are not where God put us, it's like our Jerusalem name becomes Zion. We are just sleeping. We are in deep sleep. It's like in our mentality, we went to the valley, our mind too. You must wake up your mind by renewing your mind with the word of God. Isaiah 3. Verse 10, the Lord God of Israel, the Holy One of Israel, Jacob Israel, says, The women of Zion are hosting. See me. Go and borrow, borrow, borrow. You know, borrow this, borrow that. Some people will borrow. Instead of you to stay where you are, let people locate you that you need help and pack gaily and pack lace and come and give you. They are hosting, walking with outstretched necks, flirting with their eyes. They be this broom eye. All of you that put it on, they are part of Jezebel. All of you that put it on, you are part of Jezebel. Whether you repent or you can repent from being part of Jezebel, it's left to you and God. Though. Walking with outstretched necks. Flirting with their eyes, stuttering along with swaving hip, with ornaments jingling on their ankles. <laughs> That's slavery. You are a slave. You can't go find the realm of the spirit. If I interpret all this rubbish, you won't put on your leg and what it means. Therefore, the Lord will bring sauce on the head of the woman of Zion. The Lord will make their scar bald. Have you ever seen uh, maybe they do? I don't know. Have you ever seen Esau's woman here bald and then it's from maybe after all these places cleaned bald that you now see their hair start growing from the middle because you are the one that will not be content with what God gave you as a woolly hair to show that you are the sheep. Your hair is a sign, is a, is a wonder. You still take it and put chemical on see it's bald to fulfill God's word. And you now think you are beautiful. Who defines this beauty? Who defines the beauty? Is the world. Do you know there's a part of Africa that there was a documentary done? And the men, also the men, were testifying that the reason they try to force their children to eat more is so that they can be, you know, chubby, you know, have body and not be just slim as though they are hungry. And apart from that, so that when they want to marry their children out, maybe 17 years, 18 years, which is not right, by the way, but to show that all this perception of beauty it's just the world informing you. You think the, the ones that are seen eating processed food only, snacking only, or forcing themselves to eat and vomit, that's the lifestyle of heaven. So even the men there, we're talking to the so-called Esau reporter that she herself, she, she needs to put on more body to look beautiful. The men also agree that women should be, you know, chubby, big women. God 
just want you to be who you are. Eat well. Because your eating pattern can also determine. Eat well as much as it lies in your hands. So that, those men there too, like their perception is that if you are saying no, 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 it's like you are even embarrassing them to think they didn't take care of you. So you go to another place, they say they want slim. Who is defining who is beautiful? Beauty is in, in the eyes of the Lord Most High. He is the one that knows those who are truly beautiful inside. This time, God is looking inside. When the Lord God Almighty was on earth, he looked outside. As people on earth will look outside. He, as Jacob, he looked at Rachel and fell in love with Rachel. But Rachel, inside of Rachel, she was not developed. She was not spiritual. But the one that looked like Leah, that has weak eyes, she was spiritual. I will call him Judah. For he will praise the Lord. Even the names she chose for her children were spiritual names. She's not like the likes of the foolish ones that will just go by how they feel temporarily and call their innocent baby boy garbage. As if he, he's a child of sorrow, a child of pain. Call him pain. So I won't forget that he calls me. Why would you put that, all those experience on his, on a child to be bullied with that name, to have a demon also follow him that ah we have something in common? You better be spiritual. So the Lord is saying, in that day, the day of the Lord is coming, and that in that day, the Lord will snatch all those your fine fine jewelry away. Not that he will come literally and we snatch it and snatch him. You too, by the time the Lord is upon you, you will snatch it and dump it and say, Hey, we have missed revival. So some people knew about this topic that we are going to be restored because the Lord warned me the last three days of April to come and be in this my pen room. So how are we not sure that the, the former rain has been given and the spring rains the former and the latter rains of spring will be in the last three days. You are dead. Also, in fact, Esau is just bamboozing with him. money, money, money. When they are flashing business, money, money, they are distracting you from gaining what is beyond price of any money. To gain the opportunity of being filled like the disciples of Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Who were tarrying in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, according to the warnings of the Lord. They tarried, they obeyed, and the Lord filled them. They became indestructible. They became, you know, in the twinkling of an eye, according to 1 Corinthians 15, transformed into, you know, a body that cannot perish. A body that is like the body of Yeshua, ready to rise to the cloud level like that. All that is going to happen as some people are distracted. Some I even wonder if they have preached the gospel. You see them, there's a business, they involve their children, they involve their husband. When you see people like that, they are very foolish and very, very selfish. They want you, that's why they are telling you about that business. If it was a business they could do and succeed and keep the secret to themselves, they will not come and advertise. They want you to now jump in. And this has taught me blessing. That was my sister-in-law and my sister, you know, charming me to add this body magic business. Once you get the first check, before you can make your money back, it's almost impossible. So even when you present that I made this first check, yeah, it's like the way the program is, is based on deception. So at the end of the day, part of the body magic, Go and distribute it. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Different charity shop. Take, take, take. Delivered myself. So now when you see them again, I remember I see them. If there's anything going well for some people, they hide it. So for them to come out and be saying, this visa is because they need you. 
and they are they won't even say what you we should do there. They'll be lying you into their into their what email, Gmail, or website like serpent lying you, or like a rapist lying a small girl. Let us go and do better business that pleases the Lord. In that day, the day of the Lord, the Lord will snatch away their finery, their bangles, headbands, crescent necklaces, the earrings, bracelets, and veils, the headdresses, anklets, and sashes, the perfume bottles and charms, the signet rings of your jewels that they use with juju to lay hands on you and you share in their sins. Nose rings, so called Babylonian fine ropes, that is detestable to God. To you, it's fine. To the Lord, it's a detestable item. And so the Lord will judge you based on Deuteronomy 7. 26. That God says, you who bring all these things into your home, you and that detestable thing will be liable to destruction. That's what happened to Achan in Joshua chapter 7. The pharaohs and the caves and the clothes and the purses, the mirror. You should get into the mirror of God's word and discover who you are in the word of God. If I ask any of you, now who are you in the Bible? You don't know. Whether you are Abigail or Safira or Deborah or, you know, the list of the group of women that are hostile like this. You don't know who you are. Back again to the mirror of God's word. The linen garment, the theaters, the shawl, all these things that you just want to put as seal to have a form of godliness, a form of beauty. But inside, you know, you are not beautiful. Because the beautifier is not living in you. The Holy Spirit is the one that beautifies. So that your beauty is not temporal, it's eternal. Beauty of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, of the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I've shown you followers of Fuka de Juma and Fuka de Juma herself. Enough of this, your doctrines that you think you have a marriage, you know your marriage is not going well. You know, from what you are a bit of peak is evident. We are women, and so I know. So you don't even know sometimes you contradict yourself in the sense of um, don't talk about your husband, don't do this. And then when you see that she's one apple now, you are there saying if you touch one, you touch all of us. Remember, she is not uh, among the rich. She was also having a form of godliness of Second Timothy 3.5. Since that's what is filled in this church, Church of Dan, Church of Esau, Church of Roman Catholicism. Pretense! Pretense. Let me tell you, those who cover the sins of their husband, it, if they cover it, if God wanted them to expose it, it will still be exposed, whether in their life or their death. That's what happened to Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. One to ten. If anybody's life is exposed, it's because God meant it to be exposed. If you say you cover your own, cover your own as you are preaching to people to cover, maybe because you have something to cover by yourselves as you preach on your all sorts of sexual styles on the pit of hell. So again, James chapter five, one to six, as a round up. That are you rich? You are rich and using the richness to oppress others. Whether you do it subtly or deliberate, you will not let us rest. This is me, I'm expanding my kitchen. I'm doing this and do that. Me, I want to move down size. May the Lord put that, you know, ability in my hand. I want to down size. Just live in, you know, a very modest, small modest. And you, when you know the Lord is coming, you want to down size, preparing for the Lord, and use the money to do something that will please the Lord more. Yes, some are telling you how they build this, how they destroy it. What of those who don't have house? Do you go to the poor in the street and use that money to give them? And what a pleasure it will be. I'm, I'm just thinking about that now. To go and 
cash one thousand to cash one thousand I don't know whether it would be even a good idea to give one thousand straight to somebody who is poor sitting on the floor because you don't want them to misuse the money well if the Lord said give it to him give it to her I will the most I can remember giving is the lost money hundred pounds and the man was not really begging, but the Lord led me to him because you will see that it's like he's just beginning to beg. He will still look on Kevin, he's still looking out to who you will see passing in that shopping complex area or uh, shopping. You know, there's some place that is like a, a roll of shops. You just stood by the, I sat at the entrance of one shop there. And I saw him. And I just collected the tithes of that. Uh, or with particular money going to the fellowship in cash and I saw him and I was led le to listen to him pray with him give him the money so I remember giving 100 pounds yes 50 pounds a few times let's say it because we are the true rich in heaven who will forfeit some things to have just to have that extra money of these jewelries that have been unclean. Instead of buying it, give the money to those who will look up to heaven and pray from their heart for you. Knowing that you may never see them again and they may never see you again. Because you pray that the Lord will lift them away from that homelessness situation to be housed. Let me tell you, it will be God's record of you in heaven that how many people that you don't know will say, ah, that woman, I remember one woman that came and blessed me with 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 50 pounds. That, that's the one, the God is going to look at the poor, poor. Their testimony is going to be used. This was happened to the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus, did he do you good? Of course, God already knew that the rich man did not do him good. Even though he costed him almost nothing to help Lazarus. So how dare this one assess herself and tell herself that she's rich and even go on the name of the Lord to say that the rich people, once you are the richest in that group, find yourself another group. Betrayers. They are betrayers. They are in that relationship based on temporal money. Betrayers. That's it. Stop befriending poor people. I don't see that she was poor because she's stuck it down. She doesn't want to go the route of poor and rich. If you touch one of us, you touch all of us. We are not one of you, are the rich, we are the poor. Let us leave it as it is. All this, she makes a restitution, by the way. Because some people will say, how do you know she has not repented? I'm not saying anybody has said that. When you make outward something like that, you should come and do outward repentance. So that people will say, oh, she has repented, then nobody can talk again. This thing, she did not say it in secret. She, she said it on... On uh, media, so let her do her restitution. Ezekiel 33 requires her to do her restitution. Matthew 5 23, 24, 25 requires her to do her restitution. God says we should go and love each other, feed the, the enemy of yours that's even hungry. If you have an enemy, the enemy is even begging for food. Why not feed? Your heart should sorting that. See the person I was who are not with. Maybe you didn't even realize that he hurt me, or she didn't realize she hurt me. She's begging me for food. Let me just forgive her. Let me just forgive her. Of course, you may tell her that you know you annoyed me. But I don't think you realize how much you annoyed me. But I'm forgiving you. Just take and go. James 5, 1 to 6. Now listen, you rich people. You Fukade Jimon. And the girls drooling after you wanting to be like you. Meanwhile, you know that you are contending with a lot. 
in that marriage of yours just by what you speak i can we can we in the spiritual ones we can pick it up now listen you rich people weep and wail because of the mystery that is coming upon you your wealth has rotted <laughs> and moat has eaten your clothes god is speaking in parable he's speaking in proverbs Because you are looking at your wealth and laughing, but God is looking at something that is rotting. Your eyesight is not open spiritually, so you don't know. You just see the path. It's like a fish in the river seeing the prawn is aiming for. He did not see the hook behind the prawn. So you can say the fish is moving towards the hook that will hook him out of that water to kill him. The fish does not understand that. God is seeing what he can see because what the fish can see is prawn. Meanwhile, the fish may be thinking, maybe God is talking to somebody else. What I see before me is not hook. What I see is prawn. But the prawn is hooked to the hook. So when God says in Revelation 3, 15 to 20, you, the last of Uke Adejima, you think you are rich. You are wealthy. With all this thing you put on that God says you shouldn't put on. I will punish those clad with Savannah one eight apparel. You wear trousers, you call yourself reverend. Who gave woman reverend? Who gave woman reverend? Or any man, by the way, reverend? The title God gives us is still in the scriptures, given by the Holy Spirit in Ephesians 4 11. 8 to 11. So, who gave us all these other titles? That Greedy men will always have titles for themselves. Your wealth has rotted, and moats have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in this last day. That is it. Even when God bless me, he says, Sajina, if somebody bless you with a uh, clean money, God is going to take, of course, and distribute it. This is what the apostles did. They will receive the excesses of any, anything the people of God had in Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 4. If you have excess means, excess spices, excess whatever is excess that you don't want, instead of it being in your house, and spoiling, maybe bread is spoiling. Somebody else needs bread. Why not bring it to the fellowship that day? After hearing the word of God, you leave it there. Somebody who needs bread goes to where the storage is, receives that bread, and goes and feed that family. We don't need money. We never were money people. Our own currency were gold and silver. That's how Peter says, silver and gold, I have none. But the greedy ones who want to be enriched by, by force, the likes of Judas. It's the Judas of today that are married to the likes of Safira. They will go to all sorts of measures to get their silver, 30 shekels of silver, and come and stand as if they were still in the Lord to mock those who are poor and make those ones think. You know, that God has done them bad for not making them rich. God kept you poor. Even if God enriched you one day through his blessing, let it flow to the people. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let the blessings flow. Yes. There are some people I need to reach now. With this one, starting from my own wonders, take go and clear your student university debt. Take go and clear. So there's needs even inside and outside, not just for the poor outside. So the Lord God is the one saying, "Look, you who have heard that wealth in these last days, why you should take opportunity." To give out. To give out. Oh. 
to the poor around you. Look, the wages you fail to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying against you. And these ones are so intent on holding to do, do, that riches that the people they should pay, even if they hire somebody, they want to pay the minimal money. If that person is your own child, would you pray that they favor her wherever she's in, house help, house cook, and, you know, get my all this. You want to be favored. But you are not sowing the seed of your children being favored. I never have house help and all this thing. You know? And the only one that even misbehave, she regretted because when she saw me moving to the land of my best year, I think she would have regretted that. This woman did not even tell me she is best in, in England. She didn't steal my money. She stole somebody else's money. Who came and stayed with us? Still family member. And I was saying, ah, she can. I was thinking she could do, she could do. Until the Lord let me know that she could. So when I turned on her that you could. Where is the money? She had spread it to her secondary school school mommy. School mommy. Long story. It's not every. I don't want to we recover them. If we did, not all the money. Because she took the money. She didn't know how much. She stole it from the auntie that came to stay with us. I gave it to school mommy. Secondary school. That one now. I started spending the money with her boyfriend. All of them. We are talking... 20 years ago or so. So when I now met her at a family, you know, ceremony or something like that, she has missed. Some people, they spoil their future without knowing. This was a girl I was ready to take as my daughter. But maybe because I sing her praise, she misbehaved. And stole from her auntie that came and stayed. They shared the same room. It was a big room for both of them. But as the auntie was taking her bath, she went through her stuff and saw this envelope. Until the auntie was in, on the airplane. She said, Did you see envelope? I said, Which envelope? Oh. She brought this money. Da da da. It's so, supposed to be for. Say, Me, I didn't see you. So now, if she behave, she'll have maybe most likely come here to live with me. Some people are so greedy, they spoil their eternity, their future. So, apart from her, no one else. Because if a family member, a young girl of around, we are talking a young girl of around, if I remember now, she's around 12, 13, maybe 14 at most. You just see something, it's your auntie's bag that was bathing and you put it and quickly went to school with it. No, that's not a good way. So if she sees me now, head of travel, she will have just told her, hey! Because if she had proven herself to be the daughter I choose her to be, she may have been here and benefited from whatever she needs to benefit and go back maybe later when she's old, to marry or to do whatever she wants to do. But that's the reason why we say it's not about riches. Those who want to be rich at all costs, stealing from others. Somebody can be rich by just going to kill members of their family to get the inheritance they never work for. So you think the people that can prove they are rich, many have stolen from others. Many have done so many things to be rich. Occultism. All sorts. Killing members of their family to fortify their riches and their status. So don't talk about riches this end time. Because woe is upon the riches. And those who are truly blessed. Because it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich. They know how to flow like a living, uh, living life water to others. It gives them the that fulfillment, fulfillment, rather, that desire to know that somebody is blessed because I'm alive today, and God knows it. 
Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in these last days. Look, the wages you fail to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord God Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. That's why the testimony of us, of me, sometimes I assess myself. Like the widow who says she has little, she has little, she's on her own, no? she has only oil and flour to eat, she and her son, and it's starvation. And yet, how will it be heard by someone? Let, they don't have phone then. And somebody is calling her at the time she's preparing the little oil and flour for the prophet of God. And they call her, ha, what are you doing? I'm preparing food for a prophet of the Lord. And the person may say, you that say you don't have food. One minute, you're on your own. You don't have food. Yes, you're used to the prophet. They won't understand. Foolishness is their mindset when it comes to them understanding the ways of the Lord. That's why there are some things maybe it's good to share so that the testimony will be sweet. But when God says, don't share, don't share. Because they don't understand that one minute you are saying you don't have food, yet you have enough to give profit. It seems like contradiction, but it's not. Because that woman knows that, ah, for the prophet of God, after explaining my situation to the prophet of God, for the prophet of God to now speak and say, still make me something out of that small. If you are faithful in that small, you you also have proved that if you were given much, you'll be faithful. Those who are faithful in small will be faithful in much. Out of the small food, she give me first. Let me first eat. It seems as if to the foolish ones, ah, this person, this prophecy is a fake or oh, no. She gave the prophet. The prophet ate after being hungry. Because this prophet, they don't have riches like you claim to have. You ones who hold riches, who get riches by telling people to sow seed into your life because you are what? You are the seed bearer that wants all the seed to come into your life. The woman was a spiritual woman. She knows the workings of the Lord. So I've learned that when I'm believing God for a miracle, I'm saying, God, I want to pay my debts before the end of this month. And God is saying, even the debt you owe your daughter, up to £2,000, go and pay her. Ah, that's more debt already. I'm trying to pay debt on one particular issue. And if you argue, that's it. You are arguing with the Lord who can help you. Instead of holding. You want to hold on to somebody... You are hoping that I can pay. I want God to see. Why don't you obey the Lord and see Him work miracles? So the widow served the prophet cheerfully, willingly, no grudge. The prophet will have said thank you or to the likes of such blessing. He ate and later and said, Now go and borrow many vessels. To collect oil. Vessels that you can store oil. Maybe the woman will say, ah, does it, maybe the prophet have oil somewhere. She went, she was asking for a vessel that she can borrow to pour oil. And maybe just one teaspoon of oil remaining and one small flower remaining. Now, the prophetic voice of the prophet said, pour the remaining oil in the vessel you have collected. As she was pouring, as she was pouring the oil, the oil was just pouring. It didn't stop her. She would put on it away and kept pouring. And kept pouring. 
en ce jour, c'est le Seigneur à coup. Comment si on, comment si on, comment si on the Lord has done, eh? Comment si on the Lord has done, ha, ha, son, which is the miracle? They were foreign. They were foreign. Hey, vessels were filling with oil. We we're filling with oil because in the mouth of the prophet of the Lord, what they say comes to pass. Not this fake ones of Second Peter chapter two. Who fabricate story for you? The prophet of the Lord could speak words to others in need, and it's come to pass. Like Peter said, I don't have silver and gold, but what I have, I give unto you. What we have now is to be rich in faith. So that God can pour his spirit upon us. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, 6. So when you cannot please God, why will you pour double portion of his Pentecostal pouring upon your life? For you also to pray for the sick from birth and they recover? Some listen to this paper and pencil, fake ones who tell you all this thing. Even the likes of Oyo, the wife of the family, or the in law of the family, so he to carry paper and pencil saying all these miracles that, that cannot happen unless we have been filled with the Holy Spirit of our own Pentecost. Lying to those who don't know what God has allowed us to do with half measure is that you lay hands on, on the sick. They will recover. The sick meaning the person was whole before he went to a sick. They will recover their initial whole health. Not somebody who is lame from the birth. That one you need the infilling of the Holy Spirit to the brim. So that I can do mighty miracles than before. So when they tell you that they are doing miracles without the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you know that they are liars. This is how the woman and her child, the widow, sold oil. Sold oil. And they now became more comfortable. They had more, more silver and gold to buy the other things they needed. When you are needing, you think you don't even have to give. If God comes to you and says, give this person, give this person, to others who know your soul, they will think, is she lying? Was she lying when she said she had little or little? Don't mind them. Sometimes you want to explain yourself. I wasn't lying, no. It's just that I felt the need to pay and give some of my food to the prophet. There are sometimes you don't talk to some friends who are not spiritual because they will talk you down on your miracle. Ah, where were you rising up? You have all this small bread, small oil. Instead of you to wait for God to bless you more, a prophet, yeah, give you a prophet. She won't have realized the miracle. But when it now happens, you tell them, say, thank God for that prophet. They now rejoice. Thank God. That's why sometimes it's good for us to be slow to speak and quick rather to listen to God and his prophets. So you hold the riches instead of giving to the people of God, giving to the prophet of God, giving to the poor that God says is the God of the poor. You are holding it to go and showcase that we are the rich, making friends with the rich. Rich of who stand that do? God says you have lived in on earth in luxury and self indulgence. You have fattened yourself in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who wasn't opposing you. Therefore, let's go back to verse 1 of James chapter 5. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the mystery that is coming upon you. She's already preaching mystery of sex. She should better preach the mystery that is coming upon her until she renounced her statement against the poor people. Because God Almighty says in James chapter 2, verse 5, Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has God not chosen those who are poor 
in the eyes of the world. That's how they see us that we are poor. Since we are not putting on their fake devastation makeup of Jeremiah 4.30, we are not putting the, you know, jewelries that the Lord has made on cleaning Ezekiel 7.20. Um, Exodus 33, 4 to 6. The Lord said, Remove those ornaments before I even know what to do with you. You took the ornament that God gave you initially to make idol of Egypt. Why won't God also make it idolatry to you? If you draw near to God, He will draw near to, to you. If you make idolatry of what He has given you, He too will sit as unclean on you since that day. So put it away. You put all that up on. You take a picture, glossy picture, you take your rich. You are the devastated one of Jeremiah 40. If you don't repent. For James 2 5 says, My dear brothers and sisters, listen, has God not chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith? If your riches this end time is not based on physical riches. In line with what Apostle Peter said, silver and gold I have none, but what I have I will give to you. The poor man may be looking for something physical, but what the poor man got was supernatural, supernatural restoration to health. Not longer can he depend on change. He can now walk and go and make it any for himself. In the name of Yeshua of Nazareth, rise and walk. For you to be Filled with that Joel 2.23, Hosea 6 2, a pouring, former latter rain a pouring upon you, you must prove your faith to be undying faith. Faith that will be tested through fire. And that your faith must remain unshakable, unmovable, as you continue to abound in good works. 1 Corinthians 15.58 That's why Apostle Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Is about faith. If you carry a heart full of doubt, full of questioning, full of all these uh, doctrines of demon, the Holy Spirit will not fill you with His Holy Spirit. Neither will He fill you with His able spirit. You need to be filled with faith. So, we have been chosen with the poor in the eyes of the world. We have been chosen to be rich in faith and to inherit. Hey! The kingdom of heaven that is that he promised to those who love him. So grow your faithful as you renew your mind with God's word. For faith comes by hearing and hearing through the words of the eternal God. I'm going to write it up by sharing from James chapter 2. Because some of you may say, I'm not like her. I don't boast to be rich. I'm just among the poor too. Thank God I'm poor. But your own poverty, you are very selfish. Very, very selfish. You like to receive, you don't like to give. God knows you. You are poor but selfish. You are going to be tested by Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Go and read it. That's the assignment. But listen now to you who think uh, you can just talk yourself away from being generous. James 2 14 to 20, I will read 14 to 20. Faith and works go hand in hand. You cannot separate your faith. You will prove your faith by your actions, by your works, by your deeds. What good is it, my brothers and sisters? If someone claims to have faith, but they have no deeds, they have no works, they have no action to prove their faith. God does not want those who just 
open mouth and positive confession, motivational speech, or those who just sing. Imagine singing about the holiness of God. Yet you are dressed in Sapphaniah 1 8 apparel that God Almighty, the Holy One of Israel, said, I will judge them all clad in Sapphaniah 1 8. Sure, you don't want to believe that the Deuteronomy 32 5 is about treasure. When it is grouped among foreign apparel, then you believe. So the Lord God says, through his disciple James, listen, my brothers and sisters. You know, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Of course not. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes or daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and be well fed. Positive confession. Do you understand this? A brother and sister doesn't have clothes, doesn't have daily food. You know it. You are convinced that this person doesn't have. But what you can offer that person is just words. You say, go in peace, sister. Keep warm and be fed. Did they give her the cloth to keep warm? Did they give her the food to be fed? You speak, but your actions do not have from being like that. Being fed, being clothed. So this verse 16 of James chapter 2 says, Even one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? What good is your confession of go in peace? Are you mocking her or him? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accomplished by action, is dead. All what you have spoken, go in peace, all this is dead. You could help, you didn't help. It's just dead words, idle words, words you give account to. According to Matthew 12, 36 to 37. Someone will say, you have faith, I have this. Show me your faith without actions. And I'll show you my faith by my actions. By my actions, I don't even need to tell you that I have faith in God. Do you know a few times, some, I've met one at least, that say he doesn't believe in God. I say, but I serve the living God. And he is the one that cares for the poor. And he is the one that even makes it possible for me to be standing before you, ready to bless you as a poor. So if you don't believe in my God, why should you believe that he told me to bless you? And through that, there was preaching going on. He was ready to consider the creator who could care for the poor and needy. And when I even gave him small money, it was a paper note, but I think I could have given him more that day if I had more. He was actually asking me, are you sure I can keep it as if it was that much more than he expects? Why don't you go and reach out to these people who are needing you to show the way that indeed there is love in the Creator who may not know them or they may not know, but knows them and cares for them. You say you have faith, you stay in church. Who put us in church? Our enslavers, really enslavement of our fathers and mothers when those ones were naked in chains. They have no choice but to just follow who enslaved them. But time for us to come out of that enslavement and be where God told us to be, where two or three are gathered in his name as his spiritual temples. He will be there with us. Gather in your homes and God will be there. The disciples were in their pent room of their homes. They weren't in the temple. After what they did, those Pharisees and those Romans did to the Lord, they didn't go back to the temple those ones were to occupy. So, if you are saying that you have faith, 
your face of sweet, 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 sweet talk. You don't help anyone, selfish one. But somebody doesn't need to say her face, she just proves it by her action. Show me your faith without this, and I will show you my faith by my deeds, by my works, by my actions. That is, you believe there's one God. Good. Even the demons believe that, and they shudder. They, they fear God. The problem is that you say you believe God. You have faith in God. You don't fear God. You even fear man more than God. Verse 20. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without works is useless? There you go. So, you have faith, you have faith. Even faith can be assessed from different points of view. You have faith that God is coming to fill you with the former latter rain. But yes, you can't uh, tarry before him. You can't tarry before God. So, Go and study Matthew 25, 31 to 46, because many these last days who say they have faith, they believe they are going to go through that trial. Unfortunately, that's a trial that will, they will go through based on Revelation 3 10. When we, the wise virgin, will have gone up with the bridegroom, gone up to the marriage supper of the Lamb. You will have to prove again that you have general spirit in you. Before that, your faith can be vetted as being with action. Go and read Matthew 25, 36 to 41. And let the Holy Spirit guide you in the truth to, you know, separate you, to deliver you from selfishness and start going out to people you know without them coming to you. You know that they are in need and go and bless them in that your neighborhood. Just go to that say, I just felt I should give you this. I know you may be in need. Not even until they come to you. That is the kind of faith that God respects. Faith with corresponding good actions. God bless you for listening. Shalom.